Hello! Today we're going to be looking and painting the Evil Sun's clan of orcs. Their totem is a red orc face emblazoned by a red sun. All orc glyphs represent their particular clan and the Evil Sons are no different, favouring symbols such as arrows, lightning bolts, flaming skulls and flames. A bunch of speed freaks would be the best way to describe this particular breed of nasties. According to Warhammer lore, the Evil Sons clan love vehicles. Anything that goes fast, they will acquire, nick, tweak, pimp up, and paint it red to make it go faster and scare the enemy. This stems from the ancient orc ritual of covering their vehicles with the blood of their enemies. They also have a habit of nicking vehicles off of each other or anyone else if they like the look of it. An itinerant bunch, they never stay in the same place for too long and have been known to leave the battlefield before the end of a conflict if there's nothing left for killing or stealing. Their battle tactics are legendary, if a little bit on the haphazard side. Preferring to charge against the enemy, then ploughing through them and coming back again for seconds is one favourite tactic, weaving randomly in and out of their foe's position to cause as much chaos as possible. A number of armies and species in the Warhammer world would have trouble coping with these so-called speed wars. So, down to the colour scheme. The predominant colour here of course is Mephiston Red, which we'll bring up a bit with a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet later on. Then we'll use a couple of other colours for the clothing, such as Dried Bark and Bane Blade Brown, and then we'll concentrate on the weapons, belts and other accessories that need to be done. To paint orc skin, refer back to my first video, which shows you how to speed paint orc skin quickly and effectively. Now we're going to paint Mephiston Red on all the armoured areas. Things like the helmets, the shoulder pads, some totem flags where it seems to be appropriate. Next, Evil Sun Scarlet to bring up the red just a little just a light dusting around the edges. The biscuit of choice today is a Garibaldi washed down with a cup of English breakfast tea. Then we'll use dryad bark to paint the uniforms underneath. Now I know this seems counterintuitive to paint this after the armour. If you glue these models together like I do, then there are areas that will not be seen when you paint them. I'm one of these people that like making work for themselves. But if you have enough brush control, there's no harm in it. We all make mistakes though, and they're easy enough to patch up afterwards with a brush when we're working on the final bells and whistles of a piece. Rucksacks and various rags can be painted with Bane Blade Brown, Ushabti bone or Zandri dust to complement the brown of their undergarments. On some of the wrist rags perhaps you could use uh, Mephiston Red or Evil Sun Scarlet just to bring it out a little bit more and be more in line with the uniform. It's entirely up to you. Also, Morn Fang Brown can be used for additional brown areas such as gun straps, axes or grenade handles. Once that's taken a while to dry, and you have worked your way for a few more biscuits, it's time for some checkerboard fun. On some of these orcs, certain features require a checkered pattern effect. This we are going to achieve with Avalan Sunset, a very steady hand, and a fine tip liner pen with a ruler. Yes, I know he's cheating, but if you're not confident painting these freehand, it's a good workaround. And you can use a white colour if you don't want to use Avalon Sunset, such as Corax White or White Scar. A bad and black would also work well if you prefer. The advantage of using a pen and ruler in this case is that you can get the pattern exactly right before you paint it. And if you mess up with the pen, well, you can simply wipe off that pattern with a damp cloth and start again.
Now, back to our old friend, the Baden Black. Here we're going to use this on things like belts, boots, and if you feel confident enough, some of the lacing on the trousers. Take your time with this bit because some of this is extremely fiddly. Time now to work on the fittings, weapons and other assorted bling. Here we're using iron hand steel for the gun barrels, axes and helmet ear pieces and other assorted bits and bobs. Also things like belt buckles, chains, let's face it also lots of those, those little details. For some of the more complex models such as the mech boys or the shooters we're going to be looking at things like batteries and electrodes, ammo or magazines, other assorted paraphernalia. Lots to do here, especially if you're painting up 50 at a time like I am. We're also going to use retributor armour to add gold to these models. Things like ears and nose rings, bullets, other trinkets. Anywhere you'd prefer to use gold rather than silver. To finish off the armour and other metal bits, we're going to do three things. First, another shade coat, this time Nolan Oil to bring out the details. Nolan Oil sounds like something you use for toothache. Next, we're going to use the odd dab of Mephiston Red strategically where we want to distress the armour. Things like the cracks and the scratches that are moulded in. Then once that's dried, you're going to use a dab of iron hand steel delicately in those little recesses so as not to fill the previous spot of red. If you put too much in, quickly wipe it off with a damp cloth and it should be fine. If there's a little bit of silver left around the edges or spots, just gently touch it up with Mephiston red again. Once that's all dried, we're going to shade the uniforms and armour with Agrax Earthshade, just to give it a bit of depth, filth, you know, a bit of wear and tear. Now all we need to do is to tidy up our models using the paints we've already used to patch up any errors, and in some cases use some primary base colours to bring out cables and wires and buttons, other details if there are any, and fill in things like lenses or screens that are visible. Citadel have some nice technical paints that work nicely for visors and lenses and here I have used soulstone blue, spiritstone red and waystone green to emphasise the glass features of some of the orcs here. And finally it's time to base our models up. In this case we're going to use a grella nerf and once that's dried and cracked we'll add a little bit of foliage. <laughs> mm, nothing like getting the grass out in the evening. My neighbours definitely like to think so. <laughs> I'm a bit peckish now. More biscuits, I think. And there we have it. One army of evil sons orcs ready for the table and the battlefield. I must admit these have been fun to paint even if they have been a little fiddly at times. Some painters tend to prefer to use more red on their evil sons orcs but I'm definitely of the less is more brigade. I get the impression that the evil sons are less blingy than their counterparts the bad moons and definitely more colour coordinated than the blood axes as you will see in one of my later videos. So you know the drill. If you have enjoyed this, why not like, share and subscribe to At Lunch to see more of the same as and when I put stuff online. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and you can find a decent guide to this little video on the website which tends to get updated periodically if I remember. 
until next time.